Hello viewers, this is David Blakesley. I'm here to give you another one of my Criterion Reactions videos where I talk about my thoughts on a recent release by the Criterion Collection. So today, we're going to be swinging on down to spine number 970, A Face in the Crowd, directed by Elia Kazan, written by Bud Schulberg. That's how Criterion puts it on the package there. You see the artwork there, and if you're a little bit knowledgeable, you might recognize the face of Andy Griffith, a young Andy Griffith who was kind of making his uh, big screen debut and big splash as a uh, character named Lonesome Rhodes, uh, kind of a hard-drinking uh, drifter with a guitar, a little bit of a gift to gab, a little bit of down-home wisdom and common sense straight talk, at least uh, that's the way it comes across to people that uh, maybe are open to his message. And uh, it's the story of how Lonesome Rhodes stumbles into uh, the role of being uh, what you might consider today a media influencer. Of course, this is a film that back in 1957 is when it was released. Uh, Ilya Kazan was a very prestigious director at that time. Had a pretty impressive track record with uh, some great films, but also a lot of controversy surrounding his name. And I'm not really going to get into any of that because, you know, it's all been told elsewhere and I don't really have time for it. So, but Ilya Kazan obviously could put together a pretty uh, impressive production with, with uh, you know, great talent both behind the camera and in front of it. And there's no lack of that here. We've got Patricia Neal, Walter Matthau in, in uh, pretty important supporting roles. Uh, Tony Franciosa kind of went on to some prominence in TV. And then Lee Remick, a uh, beautiful young woman making her big screen debut in this film as well. Uh, the story, of course, has been appealing for a long time uh, in political situations where it seems like some kind of know-nothing, willfully ignorant rube uh, rises to prominence, uh, a, a person who maybe has limited intellectual capacities seems to wield a larger influence in the public sphere than perhaps uh, you know, he ought to, and I guess I'll just say he, because sometimes there are women but uh, who might fit that bill, but mostly these are guys, you know, guys who kind of have a way of connecting with the mass audience on a populist note, but uh, with tinges of kind of contrived ignorance and, and buffoonery kind of in the package there. And of course, we're living in a time right now where uh, some of those same traits are, uh, you know, kind of resonating uh, with, with many people in the audience, uh, in, the, in the mass media and in public in the sphere. And the Criterion Collection, I think, has got their fingers on the pulse of that type of thing. And so this is as good a time as any and probably better than most to release a film like A Face in the Crowd. Uh, yeah, so this is a nice addition. It's, it's uh, got a pretty nice little uh, series of features here. You see the artwork. Again, the artwork is pretty dynamic. It's got a nice kind of uh, gritty vibrancy to it. Here's the scene where Patricia Neal is kind of coming into the jailhouse uh, doing her kind of woman on the street uh, interview program called The Face in the Crowd, where the film gets its name. And she just happens to, as fortunate would have it, uh, luck upon the, the presence of this Lonesome Roads character. He's a colorful figure. He, he kind of speaks off the cuff, kind of flamboyant. She puts him on the radio, and she gets a response. You know, he, he kind of stirs things up. And so they invite him back for some more regular work. He becomes part of the morning drive time, or at least the morning, uh, you know, talk radio session. Maybe commuting wasn't quite the thing as in 1957 as it is nowadays. But he was there speaking his spiel uh, to, the, to the audiences that were listening at the time. And from there, he becomes a from a regional talent, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more exposure, and all of a sudden, the big boys in the media uh, on the coasts and in Washington D.C. are paying attention to this guy because he's got that it factor. He's got that way of connecting with you know, the ordinary person on the street. And of course, as uh, Lonesome Roads gets a little bit of that uh, stroke of the ego and flush of fame and fortune. Uh, his his, uh, his own sense of grandiosity gets out of control, and uh, he becomes a bit of a monster. So the story takes its course, and, and it's, uh, it's a pretty entertaining tale. 
there's some very uh, funny satirical moments about the uh, the interface of, of advertising and pop culture and uh, the, cul the gullibility, if you will, of the mass audience at home watching this stuff uh, that kind of uh, swallows the pill, so to speak. Uh, Vitajex is the, is the product in, in question here where uh, it's basically nothing but a little placebo, a feel-good. Maybe it's got a little bit of caffeine or something in it to kind of get people hopped up a little bit. But the Lonesome Roads, no one, what he knows, uh, really sexes and jazzes up his pitch, and that makes Vitajex a, a pretty significant phenomenon at the time, at least in the context of this story. And that's what launches him to the next level, where he's going to help a stuffy, moribund old senator guy uh, become a little more folksy and a little bit more with it as far as his ability to connect to the broad populace there. So that's the idea behind this film. It's basically how can we manipulate, um, we being the, the big powers that be, the, the forces that really shape society and, and uh, trigger mass followings, how can we uh, get a, sort of that puppet figure out there to kind of do our bidding and, and make people vote against their own interests or go along with what seems to be a pretty uh, oppressive and exploitive uh, strategy as far as how the country should be managed or the economy or military or political schemes, all of those types of things. So the face in the crowd uh, has a bit of a feel-good attitude about it. If you want to sort of take your feelings from uh, sort of <laughs> a place of cynicism about why things are the way they are. And so that's that's one of the interesting uh, aspects of this film. Like I say, I, I find it very fascinating, very engaging. Uh, certainly got to give Andy Griffith a lot of credit. He, he really sells out for this role. He throws himself into it full body and soul uh, and, and really, you know, made made quite a vivid impact. So you just got to watch him, watch the movie just to see him do his thing. And I've already uh, alluded to the supporting cast. They all do a pretty solid job. Uh, I'd say the Walter Matthau character is a little bit a little bit on the nose in terms of explaining it for us and telling us how we're supposed to feel about things. Uh, but you know, you, you got to take it for what it is. It's a, it's a morality tale from the kind of the Hollywood left of the late 1950s, just at the end of the Eisenhower era. And so to put it in its historical context, you know, it's pretty interesting to think about. You know Dwight D. Eisenhower and and his uh, his political tenure, and how that's kind of seen as a little bit of a bland or generic vanilla time in American history, and yet here are some people sort of living in those years, feeling like yeah, we gotta we gotta break that mold. Well, John F. Kennedy was just around the corner as far as charismatic political leaders were concerned, and he was a bright guy and intellectually capable and all of that, but. Uh, yeah, we've seen examples uh, that go against that grain <laughs> over the years. So, you know, uh, what about a face in the crowd and its relevance to the uh, the Donald Trump era? Uh, I think it's a mistake, honestly, to equate a figure like Lonesome Roads to Donald Trump. Uh, there may be some common perspectives there. There may be some linkage, but I think the contrasts are much more important to point out. Uh, Lonesome Rhodes in this film was a young man who kind of came up out of nowhere, was an overnight sensation, a hard drinking scrabbler with no, uh, you know, no advantages, no privileges, no real opportunities to make something of himself except he kind of seized the moment. Um, Donald Trump, you know, famous teetotaler, a son of an enormous privilege, uh, born into wealth and maximized those opportunities, obviously. Uh, he's been building his media empire for the last, what, 30, 40 years or so. Uh, so there's really so many differences between Lonesome Roads, this young man who just kind of got up on TV and did his thing and got a reaction. And, of course, he's a completely fictional character for all that. And then Donald J. Trump, who is, love it or hate it, all too real, right? He is the real deal. And he's built this constituency and he's maximized the uh, you know the effect of this following that he's cultivated for all these decades, so um, you know take some enjoyment from a face in the crowd if this is your kind of thing. I, I I like it. I think it's a it's a pretty important movie and it's one that uh 
is um, definitely worth re-watching. And again, the satirical bits, the little advertising take, take off. Uh, I love those moments in the film. And I also just really enjoy the, uh, you know, the, the elevation of this little short story that Bud Schilberg wrote into a kind of an American parable. It is a, it is, like I said, a morality tale. It's a lesson for our times. And it's something to think about, but I think you know you don't want to overapply it to say that well this is the key, this is what's really going on, this is what explains our current situation. I think that's a little bit naive and foolish uh, to be honest with you. But that's my take on it. That's my criterion reaction. So let me know what you think. I'll uh, I'll respond to any comments you might get in the uh, in the section below right so like and subscribe and all that garbage <laughs> all right so that's my end of my video bye